So often, actually, one mistake people can make also is uh, during a turbulent time like this is to change their practice too much. Actually, be very uh, often the right thing to do is to just stay doing what you've always been doing. If you have a regular meditation practice, you just you keep going with that. You stay with that. Just the familiarity of something can already be a refuge. Uh, just the familiarity of the meditation object, if you use one, stabilize the mind. Eh? The smell of the incense that you usually burn, or all these kinds of things, or the rituals you usually go through. At times, these kind of rituals actually can be more helpful than usual. Chanting, or these kinds of things. So, if you'd like to uh, take up your meditation. Uh, posture and I can give a bit of a guided meditation on impermanence and uh, uh, uncertainty and you know, have a go at that. <coughs> so t take up your meditation posture, close your eyes and then if you go to your usual meditation object to begin with just whatever you're used to, and you have to settle down, something familiar. Always with meditation, the first thing useful to do is just to calm down a little bit. And then the uh, usual meditation within the Thai forest tradition is watching the breath, which you normally do at the nose tip, so you take your attention to the nose tip, watch the breath at the nose tip, and for those of you with faith, you can add the mantra Buddha, breathing in Buddha, breathing out Do, Buddha, Buddha, like this. It's a great one if you've got the faith. First of all, relaxing the body. Relaxing the body can lead you into relaxing the mind. Two step process. Relax your shoulders, relax the chest. And the breathing will come naturally into the belly if you do that. That's the most natural, and most relaxed kind of breathing, abdominal breathing. Relax the shoulders, relax the chest, breathe into the belly. Keep relaxing, relaxing. Trying to establish mindfulness, so presence of mind, coming to the present moment. Now we can find a certain stability, isn't it? So it's a sense of presence, sense of mindfulness. This is what we're looking for first of all, is sense of stability, peace. Just through enjoying the sensation of the breath into the body. Come still. The sense of stillness and peace is the refuge from which we start to watch what's happening as we meditate. 
Just allow whatever wants to happen can happen, arise and cease. Not trying to get rid of anything, just aware of whatever's happening as we watch the breath. Just keep stay with the body and the breath, no matter what happens, it's the spirit of it. So if you find some stability there in the body, the breath, the meditation, and the, all the things of the mind and all the things of the world can start to pass us by, like we're sitting on a bus uh, and everything of the world is passing by out of the window, that kind of feeling. It's what we're looking for, which can take a little time to develop and might not happen in a situation like this. That's the stage at which you go on to the second part of the meditation. You're waiting for this sense of stillness, and being established in stillness and peace. And if the conditions of the mind, conditions of the world, coming and going, just like the world to the window of the bus. This is already a seeing impermanence, isn't it? Just seeing things arising and ceasing, passing by. From a peaceful perspective, an accepting perspective. And those of you with more experience uh, can tune in on the breath and start to see the breath as something that's impermanent. Every breath in and out. So we're watching aren't we, one of the vital processes of the body, uh, precisely the one actually that this coronavirus is out to threaten, isn't it? Our respiratory system of breathing. If we experience meditator, then we can be facing the fact that this each breath can be our last breath even. Are you going to get another one? Are you going to be another one? That gets us right onto the edge of Anicca. That's a kind of diamond sword of meditation practice. The sharpest edge of our mindfulness we can find it. That we've we got, have we got another breath to live? It's a very strong practice, isn't it? And people who are really ready, peaceful, established in this mind space, this sense of stability of mind. Where you can see something like that, and the mind's not shaken, in fact, the mind opens up let's go of the attachment to the body through seeing like that. That's a very deep practice, a very blissful practice. Not that, you're try, not that you try to let go, you become aware of the breath, the sense of uh, the transience of life, one breath at a time, 
give him a sense of immediacy. See how the, the pure mind or the still mind uh, is not affected by seeing this fact. Uh, let's go, not shaken, but actually strengthened. Let's go through seeing this impermanence opens up. Gradually, gradually. If contemplating like that, then it does get scary. And then just go back to the breath. And go back to this peaceful feeling. On the mind, the spreading metta to ourselves, to others, and re establish the peace of mind, find the stability to and fro like this. For this edge, uh, the present moment, can really feel like we're coming alive. Waking up, we really wake up, and then we see the stability. The, of the mind in the present, the essence of the mind in the present, awakened mind, brightness, stillness. And we're not afraid. So this is our refuge, this is what we're trying to get to, to find a refuge. And we're not shaken, whatever happens in this situation. Yeah, this is a very deep practice. Uh, we approach it step by step. The mind starts to waver and we just go back to the concentration, back to the peaceful feeling of the breath, stillness of the body, relaxing, relaxing. But for this sense of uh, sitting on the bus, watching the thoughts and feelings go by. Just with that for a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes more, and if anyone wants to write in something on the chat line.
or another effect of meditation like this is a sense of gratitude, thankfulness for life, not taking for granted that we're going to wake up tomorrow, this kind of attitude. Uh, grateful to have had another day. Uh, one way which could go in a positive direction. Another way. I'm grateful to have been spared for another day. Another day to practice. You have to remain patient and just take things one step at a time. We can't rush this process no matter how much it seems to be needed or uh, can't rush it. Have to just keep going one step at a time. And one breath at a time. I have a question here, okay, from uh, Lynn Therese, hello Lynn Therese. Uh, so she says, in one of my articles I've written, it is natural, even healthy, to worry at a time of crisis, but if we let our proliferating mind do the worrying, it will never end. Uh, would you mind talking about this a bit? Yes, certainly. So, uh, uh, so the, the worrying mind is a, is a kind of alarm system, isn't it? The automatic worrying mind. And at a time like this, then it's got something to worry about, and there's something real out there. So often our worrying mind is going about all kinds of things, an automatic proliferating mind. Uh, yet at a time like this, we can be needing to, uh, there is a problem out there, and yet we wouldn't want to let our proliferating mind pick this up and run along with it. Uh, because so for two reasons, one is that it will just go on and on, uh, never end, just keeps one thing after another. And the other reason is that the proliferating mind, you know, it just either go one way or the other, it runs one way or the other, either towards being negative or towards being positive, depending how it starts off. So it tends to, <laughs> tends to lead us always towards one extreme or the other. Uh, it rattles along it's just in its associative way either in a negative direction or in a positive direction. In a negative direction, we'll just get uh, afraid or, or unhappy. In a positive direction, we could just get irresponsible or something, isn't it? Uh, not recognize, uh, to not be cautious. Uh, so the, the principle always in practice is to be replacing uh, or overriding the proliferating mind with with mindfulness. So as we meditate, we're developing this mindfulness and coming into the present. And then we can apply this uh, mind in the present moment to, to finding skillful thoughts uh, about the present situation. Uh, thinking, uh, I must wash my hands or I must wear a mask or whatever we have to do, rather than letting the automatic mind tell us what to do. That's always uh, that's, that's always a problem. If you let the proliferating mind tell us what to do, then it won't stop wanting to tell us what to do, it won't leave us alone, we won't have any peace. So we try to pick up these things out of the automatic mind and make them a conscious decision. Now I wash, uh, if, you, if your mind keeps nagging you, I must be uh, washing that, must wash my hands, must wash my hands, then and uh, yes, you make the decision, okay, so uh, yeah, I better wash my hands before I eat or whatever it is, so doing the right thing by this situation, uh, consciously, uh, or social distancing, whatever it is, we're doing it consciously, uh, rather than through fear or worry. Uh, we recognize that at this present time, you know, this kind of worry has a, has a reason, is it? You know, that this, at the moment, it's a kind of, it, we, we need to be listening to these alarm systems of the, the mind, isn't it, to some degree. Uh, often, in, often in our, our more usual life, uh, these alarm systems are a bit redundant. You know, they're based on the kind of survival system of a, of a 
more primitive survival system, if you like. Uh, now, a question from Yadam, who's a member of the Oslo group. Um, when I meditate now, it's sort of like I feel two quite different bodily sensations. It's the normal aches and pains and sensations. And it's a uh, sort of different set of sensations throughout the body as well, uh, which is pleasant as far as I can tell. Uh, how to relate to that? Uh, <clears throat> I would just, can I ask you, Aaron, is that does that sensation change with the breathing process? Uh, sometimes people, they, you develop a quite a subtle sense of the breathing process throughout the whole body uh, through mindfulness of breathing which is a very pleasant feeling that you connect with the breathing on a deeper level yes he says kind of so uh, typically this will follow the pattern that you see in yoga or tai chi qi kung so if you're having these kinds of sensations and it's worth uh, looking up one of these uh, techniques or, or, or schemes for this kind of thing, yoga or tai chi. If you have a quite intense feelings like uh, small areas of energy, then yoga is a good one to tell you how these how this works, how the kind of energy of the breath feelings, this, this more subtle feeling of the breath moves throughout the body. Uh, if it's very open and cool sensation, then tai chi or qi kung is a very good system that talks about how these feelings vary with the breath, the cycle of the breath, and you can watch them more closely, become more aware of them. Uh, this can be very good, it's like the you know, mind's really getting into the body through the breath when you start feeling like this, uh, you're really starting to become more aware of the body and the breath together. And you can even start to have images of uh, the body coming up, like a brightness entering into the body. Uh, Yeren says that these sensations are fairly uniform throughout the body, uh, can flow a bit. Uh, that's, yeah, that's normal. There's a kind of background uh, feeling to the whole thing, and then a more subtle uh, energy that flows around or sense of the breath that flows around from one place to another. Uh, this is a good sign, or something that you, you uh, advise to try and find a, a central point of it or the strongest point of this awareness throughout the body, try and find that. And another way of practicing. Where, where is this sensation strongest? Or where does it flow the most? Where is it most flowing or free? Uh, that will be where your mind is getting most into the body, if you like. Uh, if you've got a potential there to, uh, to enter into this very direct experience of the body and lead to uh, an image or a uh, much uh, elemental sense of the body, uh, heat and uh, air, water, and this very natural, peaceful uh, sense of the body. Is, this, is that part of it, Yaron? Do you have any elements there in your awareness of the body? If you so, you can tune in on a particular element if it feels, gives the body a certain sense of solidity or lightness, which would be earth element, solidity, or uh, he says so he's previously had a sense of solidity through this. Now it's feeling a bit different. Often when the, the earth element is the first one that we notice when we practice like this, you get a sense that the body starts feeling very solid and then as the mind penetrates further, breath penetrates further into the body then it goes lighter and lighter. Uh, as I say, or the other way is looking at these uh, 
yogic systems, the chakras, uh, if you have these uh, balls of energy or intense senses, sensations, or Qi Kung or Tai Chi if you have something more open and cool. So these things will often start off as a feeling, uh, feelings and the elements, and then uh, eventually the final stage is where you get uh, some brightness to it, like a light. Uh, you start to see the mind, see the body, get an image of the body coming into the mind. That's a very that's where it gets very interesting, radical. Uh, you get what are called nimitas or, or visions of the body, a very cool, bright space. Uh, this is the mind really detaching from the body and seeing mind and body as two different things. Uh, that's the way it takes us right to right to the culmination of the practice.